Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another Oxygen tutorial video. My name is Jonathan and today what I'm going to do is show you how to use layered classes to speed up your workflow when you're designing elements such as buttons, which tend to have kind of standard styles, and the layered classes will enable you to create a few different variations of the same element and be able to reuse them as you see fit. So on your screen here, you can see a couple different examples. The first one, of course, they're named appropriately. The standard button has a little bit of a hover effect. The light button is basically the same thing. It inherits the border radius, it inherits the shadow on hover, and then we just made a couple variations like the background color, but we didn't have to recreate all the styles like border radius and the hover thanks to the layered classes. On the invert hover, it's pretty much the same thing, except we set a different background color uh, on the regular state, and then of course on the hover effect, we added that nice transition. And then the larger button is just a, a similar variation of the standard one, except we set a percentage width so that way the button is actually bigger. So these each are layered. I'll show you exactly how to set these up and what these classes are called, and then that way you can kind of apply it to your own workflow. We'll go ahead and move into the Oxygen Editor to get started. So inside the Oxygen Visual Editor, the first thing I'm gonna do is add in a section, and then we're gonna add in a text link, and that's gonna be the primary element that we're working with. So you'll notice up here that you can see this little blue button that says ID. If you click on that, you, can, you have the ability to enter a class name. Now this class name is something that you'll probably wanna keep really consistent and make the naming uh, really simple. So for instance, we're just gonna call this first one button. And then what's gonna happen is that anything that you apply to the class called button, you can assign to any other element like a text link or whatever else this class applies to and all the styling options that you configure here in the, um, in the styling window is going to copy over to that element as well automatically. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually switch back to this ID and I'm going to put in a margin beneath this text link of let's say 40 pixels because I want you to be able to see multiple text links and how these classes are gonna stack, but I don't necessarily want the class itself to have a margin beneath it of 40 pixels. Now you can always assign a margin to an individual element by making sure that you're selecting the ID and that that uh, margin is only going to apply to the ID, that element itself, rather than the whole class. So if we switch over to the class now, you can see there's no margin on it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is on this text link, I'm gonna add some padding. So let's add 15 pixels to the top and bottom, and then let's add something like 30 pixels to the left and right side. From here, what I'm gonna do is go add a background color, and we're just gonna use one of the global colors we already have. The one that I used the first time was this one called Tyrian Purple, so I'm just going to add that in, but of course the text color, we're not gonna leave that default blue, so we can change that by going to Advanced, Typography, and changing the color to something like white. You would probably also want to make the text uppercase like we had it before. Generally, buttons tend to be uppercase instead of capitalized, so we're gonna set, set it to uppercase. The font size, maybe let's bump up to something like 18 pixels. Buttons tend to have a, an objective like a call to action, so we want the font to be a little bit bigger. And then let's go back to advanced borders, and we're gonna set the border radius to something like eight pixels to give the border a nice rounded edge instead of those sharp corners. So from here, what I wanna do is add in that nice transition effect when we hover over this element that shows the box shadow. So what we're gonna do is go back to the advanced tab again, click on effects, go to transition, and then go to 0.2 seconds, and then the timing function I generally always do as ease in out. And then from here, what I'm gonna do is click on the state option here, and you'll notice there's a couple different ones. So I only want the box shadow to appear on hover, so I'm gonna, gonna click on the hover element, Go back to the effects tab here, and then under box shadow, I'm gonna set the shadow color to black and then change the opacity to more like 15%. The horizontal offset, zero pixels, vertical offset is going to be 10, and shadow blur is going to be 20 pixels. So now you can see there's that faint little box shadow. Maybe if you wanted to just see it for the sake of this example, let's bump it up to something like 40%. And then now, if we change our, uh, our state option here back to original, then you can see that the hover shadow effect is there with the transition that we just applied. Now that's a pretty good button. So we've added just a couple of styling options here and created a fully functional button. So what I'm gonna do now is add in another text link. And then what we're gonna do is to, to show you how the class works is I'm gonna add the same class of button to this, which is gonna copy over every styling change that we just made to this element. But this time I actually want the button to have a lighter background color like you saw in the original example. So this time I'm going to change the class to button 
hyphen light. And then you'll notice that makes no change because of course we haven't changed any of the styling options in the class called button light. So what I'm gonna do here is just change the background color to that lighter kind of, what is this one, bouquet color. And then the, maybe let's change the font weight to something a little bit heavier so it kind of stands out against that white. So if we change it to a font weight of 700, that looks pretty decent. And just for the sake of clarity, I'm gonna rename this button the button light. And then I will also name the button above us just button. That'll help us keep track of which element has which classes assigned to it. Now we're gonna make the inverted button. So again, let's just go ahead and add the text link element one more time. And with this, again, we can just assign the class of button to it. And then this one is gonna take a little bit of styling. So actually now we need to go into this text link again. And you could either do one of two things. You could add the margin to this individual element if you wanted to, but let's actually just go ahead and assign it to the button. And I think I did 40 pixels of margin. Now let's go back to this element here. And of course we just assigned the class of button, but I actually want this one to be button inverted. So we're gonna call this one button hyphen invert. And then I'm gonna rename the button itself. And then we need to do a couple of things. So keep in mind, because we have the class called button here, that's gonna carry over our border radius, which you can see. It's gonna carry over our hover effect with the box shadow. So really the only things I need to change are the actual background color on the original and the hover states. So I'm gonna make sure I have button inverted selected. And in our original state, I just wanna make sure that the background color is set to white. And then of course you can't actually see the text there. So let's go to typography and we will change it to the color that we're gonna end up as, which is our Tyrian purple here. And then of course that's pretty hard to see. You wouldn't really know that that's a button because it's just some text there. So what we're gonna do is actually go change the border color to the same Tyrian purple. I'm gonna set it to one pixel wide and it has a solid border. And then maybe let's change the border to something like 50 pixels, 50% 50 opacity. So now you can see that our inverted button is kind of coming along, but it doesn't change the background color on hover like we want it to. Now, again, that's really simple to fix. All you have to do is change the state to hover. We're gonna change the background color here to our Tyrian purple. And then we're just gonna go to typography and set that to white again. So now if we go back to our original state, you can see it has the Tyrian purple border and the font. And then if we hover, changes the font to white and our background to Tyrian purple. So you can see how easy it was to set up an inverted button thanks to our layered classes on this particular element. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and just duplicate this element here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is delete the button invert class off of this, just keeping the original button class. And then I'm gonna add a new one called button wide. And then what I'm gonna do here is just set the width to something like, let's say 35%. And then that's gonna make our button a lot wider, but of course you would want the font to be centered in that. So go to typography, choose text align and center. And there you go. Now your button is a lot wider and it's got the centered font for you. The other thing you might wanna do on a bigger button would be something like increase the font size. So maybe like 20 pixels and then Maybe if you want the letter spacing to be something a little bit more interesting, like two pixels, that kind of looks good actually. So you can see to achieve this wider button, all we had to do was make a couple of tweaks on this button wide class. And thanks to the fact that we're using our layered classes here, it was really simple to maintain the border radius, the hover effect and the box shadow and the styling components like the background color. So if we go ahead and save, we'll refresh on the front end and you can see there's all the options that we just set up. So our original button with just the hover effect our lighter version with the hover effect as well that we were able to add in just thanks to the original button class, the inverted button and our wider one. So hopefully this tutorial has been helpful for you to see how easy it is to layer classes on top of each other and save yourself a lot of time when you're designing larger sites especially. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial and I will see you in a future video.